Welcome back to Pride. Another video in the won't start section. We got an Arctic Cat ATV 500 that won't start. I already got the engine off and a lot of the plastics off. So while I have the engine off, I already started by painting the frame. I'm going to start painting the plastics now as well. And that's what this video is going to be on. Since this is an Arctic Cat, we're going to do an Arctic Camo paint job on this it's going to be white black and gray i already painted the exhaust the exhaust is just matte black that is a high heat paint because exhaust systems get very hot so we always paint exhausts with a high heat paint now we're going to be doing the plastics the plastics are going to be white gray and black arctic camo let's get started before we take off that back plastic and that front plastic piece there, we're going to start with the smaller plastic pieces that we already have off. Alright, we got two side panels right here. These are some of the smaller plastic pieces. We've got a broken one here. This is broken at the top. We're going to remove these stickers. You can see how dirty these are on the inside as well. This one only has one sticker. Pretty dirty on the inside we're going to use some dish soap and a sponge dish soap has a lot of degreaser in it so this will take any grease any any dirt any oils off of these panels before painting them this way we get a real good stick on that paint so we'll do that now get them nice and clean and get these stickers off as well all right, now we've got our panels drying off in the sun. Want them to be completely dry before you start any painting. The decals came off fairly easy, wasn't too bad. Got all that glue residue off, ready to be painted. All right, while those panels dry, we do have our cleaning supplies out. I've been wanting to clean this gas tank as well. The gas tank is off, it's emptied, got a lot of grease and build up on this gas tank that gauge is good and dirty I'd like it to be a little clearer so we're gonna give this gas tank a quick clean as well and then we'll put some good lubrication on this gas hose as well so to give it a long life alright we'll set our gas tank off in the Sun our panels are almost fully dry. We'll leave this gas tank here to dry before coming back to it, cleaning it with some Armor All. Very good for plastic. Now that the panels are nice and dry and we can start painting, first I wanna pop out this rubber boot right here. This is where your gas valve will be showing through for you to be able to turn the gas valve on and off. Just wanna pop this rubber boot out. Just push it from that other end and you should be able to pop it right out and we'll reinstall it once our paint job is done. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be using three different colors on this Arctic Camo. I'm gonna be using white, gray, and black. Whichever color you want to be showing the most, you wanna use last. So we're gonna start with black, then gray, and then white in the end. This way we have mostly white, then gray, and the least black so our base coat which we're going to paint the entire panel front and back is going to be black now we're going to start with our first coat of black you always want to go thin layers of paint you never want to stay too long in one spot with the spray paint we're just using a flat black and we're going to use small bursts for small spaces and longer bursts where we can okay we're gonna get a nice first coat you don't want to keep the nozzle too close to your surface keep a good amount of distance you don't want to see any puddling of the paint you want a nice thin clean first coat okay you can move to the other side of the panel to be able to get that back end we're gonna give this a really good dry before flipping it over 
to do the other side. Nice thin coat. That's it, first panel right there. We can move to the side <clears throat> to get this other side right here. I really hate painting over this green because I do love green dirt bikes, green quads. But this quad is gonna look really nice with that Arctic camo. Move to the opposite side, you can see that little bit of green still showing there gonna give ourselves some more space and move the other panel out of the way this way we can hit that edge you don't want to put too much there you don't want to end up sticking it to your painting tarp nice thin coat and this is just our first coat There we have our first coat. We're gonna let that dry real well. You never wanna rush it. Always give it extra time to dry before we start adding in that gray and that white or even before applying a second coat of black, which we probably will do. Probably do two coats of black on both sides, making sure that our base coat is really strong. Now let's go over to our other panel. This is the one with that small portion of it that's broken this portion of the panel actually snugs under the front body so you can't even see it we'll see how well we can secure it when reassembling the quad after we do some work on the engine and get everything right before reinstalling everything but in the meantime perfect time to do your paint job is when you have that engine off all you got is the frame and the body so here we can do a long stroke because we have the whole length of the panel you don't want to move too fast you don't want to move too slow just right we'll move to the sides make sure that we got no green showing come around to this side and you can see this panel is still a little stained a little dirty but i did give it a good scrub and a good clean there's definitely no grease left behind no residue left behind this is just stains this is a 04 so it's about 17 years old pretty sure the first and second owner left it outside most of its life so we're trying to bring this quad back to life we'll see how well we can do on the engine either way it deserves a nice paint job so there's our first coat we got to let both of these panels dry real well before we can flip them over to paint the insides. All right, I'm going to bring you guys back over to the gas tank while those panels dry with their first coat of black. We got our gas valve shut off right here. We're going to hit this with a lot of lubricant. When I actually started working on this quad, the valve wouldn't even turn. So I did have to hit it a lot of times with lubricant, let it sit, and really play with it before I got it working. Once we're done with the quad and we get it all put back together, as long as it's working properly, it should be fine. Otherwise, I'll replace it once we, once we fill up that gas tank and take a look and make sure everything's working properly. Make sure no leaks. Make sure the valve closes well. Any problems, we'll just replace it. It's not a very expensive part. But it seems to be working fine once I got it moving. And now we're just going to clean all the plastics with a little armor all and a nice soft rag. Once I'm done wiping this down, it's going to be shining real nice. It's going to look brand new. Decent amount of dirt still coming off this gas tank even after degreasing it with that soap and sponge and hose. 
so it's always good to give it that extra finish and clean it with something good for rubber and plastic anything similar to armor all interior car cleaner a really good spot that you always want to hit is your hoses hoses do deteriorate over time and use especially if they're carrying fuel or fumes through them so that's a very good spot to hit with some armor all any type of lubricant can really soften that hose keep it from drying keep it from corroding all right and here's our final result of our gas tank it's nice and clean doesn't look brand new but it looks clean doing something you might as well do it right get it as clean as you can inspect it good like i said we'll check that gas gauge and the gas valve make sure everything's working properly otherwise they'll be needing replacements all right now that our base coat is dry we got that matte black we're going to start with our stencils we got this one here we got one from a pine bush you don't want to use pine tree because they got too many needles it'll come out too blotchy we might even sift through this and try to get some of these needles off before we begin but this is from a pine bush a little bit less pine needles than those trees We got some cool shaped twigs here chose three and you want to find stuff that's nice and straight you don't want to find stuff that's too curved because when you're placing it against your panel you want it to be nice and flush you don't want it to be pulling away if you do have a slight curve like this one here you can use it in certain areas where you have a curve on the panel And like I said before, we're going to start with our gray. You're going to lay your stencil right out on your panel. This top branch is a bit too thick. I'm going to go with this side branch here. It's a little bit smaller and a little bit thinner for this size panel. Just going to go one spray. right there next spray you want to use a different angle don't want to continue with the same angle always switching up the angle we'll go sideways on this one I want to save the white for this spot here where our gas valve is going to be peeking through so I'm going to get a little bit close to it, but I don't want to go right on it because I want to use the white in that area there. Just going to do a little bit there. Got a pretty big area here, so I'm going to use this top portion of the branch. And I want to angle it right out towards this tip. This is a small panel, so we're going to go pretty quickly. Now we want to switch it up. We want to use some of our other stencils. We'll throw this one right in the middle here. I got a pretty good gap over here. We'll see how this one comes out. There we go. We want to spread those leaves a bit. That's it right there. We'll get one more right at the top here. And moving on to the next stencil already. Let's try with this guy right here. We can get some nice shapes with these twigs here. want to see something smaller with more detail this side branch right here has those nice details we'll stick him right in here in the center 
Perfect. We can't do too much because we've got a small panel here. It's gonna fill up rather quickly. We'll turn our angle. We'll do one more right here at the bottom. Perfect. We wanna stop on the gray once we're starting to fill in too much because with the white, we're gonna fill the in-between, these spots here, anything in between what we've already done. I really like that pine bush, how that came out, our other leaves as well, and the sticks making it look really cool. Now, after using a little bit of each of your stencils, you can choose which ones you like the most, which ones you want to be prominent, which ones you want just as a little bit extra, as a little filler, so you can switch up your game plan. You wanna let that gray dry real well before starting with the white. Now, this gray is really light. It almost does look white, but I know once we get that white on there, you'll see the difference in the gray and the white. Now, cutouts like this, this cutout is for our gas valve. These are cool spots where you can really add a lot of professionalism to your to your paint job just because of the way the way it's going to come out the way it's going to overlap so we're going to start with our white now gave our gray a little bit of time to dry and i want to go right to that spot that i've been dying to do nice now we're going to fill in all the spots in between. We can use all the stencils we were using already. This one here. We got a little bit of a groove in our panel and a little bit of bend in this twig. So we always want to try to get it nice and flush. for when we're filling in. We can go with leaf over here. Get one more on this side here. pine right at the top here filling up real quickly as you're filling up but you still want to add more you want to go to your smaller stencils which would be the twigs so we're going to go to the smaller stencils and we're going to go to the smallest the smallest detail as well which would be just little portions of our stencil. So maybe this portion right here, or even down here, just trying to fill in. As I said, whichever color you want to be your main color, you always wanna use that last. As you can see, we're getting that Arctic feel already, getting a lot of white on there. One more right in here. And we can overlap. If you feel you're going over some of your previous stencils, that's okay because that's going to make it all blend. You can just keep going, keep overlapping, and keep covering. We're going to start with our gray on our second panel. We really know now the pattern that we want to get. We want to know how much of each stencil that we're going to be using. So now we have a really good idea. Makes that second panel a real breeze when you're doing that second panel. We know exactly how many times we're going to use each piece. The further you stay, 
from your stencil, less chances of moving it when spraying. Comes out really nice. And remember, you can always overlap. We're gonna bring this one down, come from above. So you always want those different angles. We're gonna push down, separate those leaves a bit. One shot. Go here as well. Very nice, we'll get this top corner. Now we'll add in our twigs as our filler. Switch colors, move on to white. Remember what I said about overlapping? It's okay to overlap. These final touches are gonna be what blends everything together. Get a nice straight one, full branch over here. We could give it a minute, let it dry a bit. See if we like something more than something else to add in. If we need more fillers in certain areas, you can always add to it, you can always go over it. You can always keep on overlapping. Main thing is getting the pattern you want, getting it to look the way you want. Give it a good time to dry, and then we're going to hit it with a clear coat. Now we've got our finished product. These are two of the smaller panels on the Arctic Cat 500. Not going to spend too much time on them. They are small, doesn't take long to fill. I'm happy with this paint job on these two, so I'm just going to let these dry. Let them dry real well before going with our clear coat. All right, now we've got our final step. We're just gonna apply a thin clear coat, not too thick. Gonna keep that paint can moving. We allowed our paint job to dry real well. And we're just using a semi-gloss clear coat, not too high. Just to seal everything in. to get the sides real well that's it one panel done thin layer semi-gloss clear coat we'll get these sides first on this one I'll definitely film when I do the larger panels of the body of that arctic cat so you guys can see as well the type of designs you can do when you have a larger panel opposed to these small side panels nice light clear coat I don't want it to be too thick, just enough to seal in and preserve our design. So this is how you can do an Arctic camel paint job for your Arctic cat or for any type of paint job you're trying to do. 
thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video hope it helps you out be sure to subscribe to pride martial arts turn on notifications for all future videos